Hey guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives, and I'm back, finally. I know, I swear I'm not going to say it anymore, where I say, oh, I'm going to get back on my regular YouTube schedule, because it seems to be a curse. Every time I say that, something comes up, and my YouTube schedule gets all kinds of screwy, so I'm just going to do my best. So I guess, uh, what better way to welcome me back than do a little shop tour. So we'll go in the crappy tin shed. And... Oh, oh no, what happened? Oh, that's right. The reason why I've been away. Because I've been building this. Sorry about the sun glare. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Put my hand over there. So that's the old shop right there, which was right here. And I'll roll in a few pictures of how I had to move this like the Egyptians <laughs> on pipe rollers and, and I jacked it up with some car jacks and pushed this out of the way while it was still full by myself. Uh, those Egyptians were onto something. It, it worked just fine. So here's the new one. It's built to maximum legal specs. As you see, I got some windows, nice heavy duty construction. And there's a reason why I was prompted to build this so suddenly. There's that sun again. So, I guess we'll take a look inside. Now this, uh, I wanted to bang this out as fast as I could because obviously I can't work on knives and get this thing done at the same time, but we got the big old barn doors that we made to, to get in. So plenty of clearance to get machinery in and out. And, uh, all that other fun stuff and you know when, when it's a nice day out like today obviously this uh, the old shops just gonna go away I'll throw it on the other side of the yard put mowers or something in it but when it's a nice day I got all the windows and this big door to get some fresh air in here it's not so lonely when you know when, when you're inside this thing and you have the tiny little door in the front and no windows it's it's like being in solitary confinement. It's not, it's not a very uh, warm, welcoming environment, I guess you should say. I still loved it though, and I spent a year in there. So uh, would I change it? No, no, I, I I appreciated it. But here's the new shop, as you can see. And before I give you the quick tour, I just wanted to say uh, a couple of thank yous to to the guys that uh, first of all, you guys for for waiting so patiently you know I, I know I've been uh, MIA for a couple of uh, I think it's a couple of weeks now and uh, yeah nothing but positive support I'm not putting up any knife pictures I put up a p few pictures of the shed in progress uh, as I built it and uh, nothing but uh, but great words of support and you know encouragement so thank you for that guys uh, secondly uh, this wouldn't have been possible, at least not nearly this quickly or this square and straight, <laughs> if it weren't for my uh, soon-to-be brother-in-law. He's a contractor by trade, and uh, he really helped me out huge. He took days off of work to, to help me build this thing and, and build it right. You know, we overbuilt it. So the floor is nice and solid, and we built this for a purpose. I wanted to build this around knife making. And... For this guy which I'll get into that in a minute so uh, after that I wanted to, wanted to say thank you to my to my dad actually because my dad is another huge supporter of mine because uh, he actually watches my videos so when dad when you see this thank you <laughs> uh, but towards the end of the project I was uh, starting to run a little low on funds and I was thinking, oh, geez, well, now I'm going to have to delay it, and then there's more delay for the more knife stuff, so I would just kind of be on hold with nothing to do. So he says, you know what? You love doing it. I love the work that you can do. Here's the rest of the money you need. Get the shop done. So, and he says, and I don't want the money back. He said, well, wow, you know, thanks, Dad. That, I really, really appreciate that. He helped me out big time. And of course, my, my sister, my future uh, brother-in-law's girlfriend, uh, who was out here helping, and my fiance as well, who was out here helping and didn't ask for a thing, didn't, you know, 
just all all positive words and encouragement from everybody, which was great. So, all right, enough about the sappy stuff. I know you guys want to just uh, get to it and see the knife shop. Now, I said this was kind of purpose built, so the floor is super reinforced, uh, just because uh, the machinery. Like this guy here is a thousand pounds. So I needed something that could support the weight. This would have snapped right through the floor in my other shop. As you can see, the old one was this 2x4 construction. So it would have went blown right through the floor and that would have been the end of the other shop. Not to mention getting it in there would have been impossible. Uh, the other thing was, I wanted windows and I wanted a way to get some of the dirty machines near the window. So like uh, the blast cabinet right behind the window so I could open that up and get a little fresh air in uh, and, and just not get s totally suffocated by the dust uh, same thing with this guy it's uh, it just slings garbage as you can see it's aiming towards that window not that I'm dumping it all in the environment it's just to get some fresh air in you know as opposed to the other shop where I had nothing okay uh, next is if you're a knife maker, you know how often you fill up outlets. So I wired this whole shop. I uh, overdid it. So there's outlets, outlets everywhere. You know, that really, really helped because I didn't want to build this big old shop and then start running all these cheapy extension cords, which is just a fire hazard waiting to happen. So this one is wired properly and can handle the load that I'm putting on it. I'm no electrician. But I did a whole lot of YouTubing and I overdid it. So, alright, aside from that, uh, the specs of the place, it's 12 by 12 by about 12 high, which is max le legal limit. And it's all within legal specs, so if the building inspector happens to pop by, he's, he's not going to tell me to shut it down or move it or anything. So, I wanted to stay in those parameters. I would have built it a bit bigger, uh, but like I said, I, I, I live on Long Island and... It's just a rule for everything, so got to do what you got to do, right? But all right, so over here we have the clean bench, and we'll start from the bottom. I still got some construction stuff in here. I still got about a day worth of work to do in here, but I'm all moved in now. So clean stuff. I got a whole bunch of handle material, and all my metals and titanium. I even have a little bit of zirconium down there, and my Kydex oven. Uh, the clean bench, I'm going to end up cleaning off even more get some of this stuff up and out of the way because now I have walls where I can mount stuff so I plan on putting some cabinets up there uh, just to stuff that I don't use that often I could just store it away but it's still within uh, easy access if I need it of course I had to throw some some logo action and some stickers in here so there's there's me and these guys Erica Nation huh what is that but they're gonna get a separate shout out in another video uh, once I get around to it, uh, but yeah, yeah, air guns. Who knew, right? Uh, of course, you have to have a bottle opener. Can't have a shop without a bottle opener. Or, you know, a man cave, if you will. So got my tapping drill press uh, with the tapmatic. This thing is great. You know, if you guys uh, have trouble tapping holes and snap uh, the little taps constantly, like I do, it's a great investment. They're expensive, but they're great. The mill is finally on its stand, the GO704. I, the mill came with this stand, uh, but it was in storage because it just didn't fit in the other shop. And now I got a, a bit more storage in there. I could barely fit my rotary table in there. Uh, but it's nice. It still has a bit of wobble. It had a bit of wobble in, on, the, on the old bench there too, so I'm just kind of used to it. But it's nice to get this and have plenty of room around it where I can work. And then we have another pegboard with more mill stuff, and I'll probably put some more cabinets on top of that. There's some more storage. Everything on this bench, the grinder bench, so obviously you got the big, uh, big belt grinder there, my vise and my regular drill press. I spaced it all out. I got rid of the buffer. I moved it to the side. Uh, so you have more elbow room with everything. It's Nothing's so cramped anymore. And the bottom is all grinder attachment so plenty of plenty of room down there and one of the things that excited me the most is that 
I no longer have belts in the doorway. I don't have to get smacked in the face with a 220 grit belt every time I walk in the shop, which is great. Uh, they're just the big bicycle hooks. They're like five bucks each. Uh, I'm going to get two more, put them right up there. Over here we have the blast cabinet, which I can't run yet until my compressor shows up, but I'm going to end up getting a compressor and putting it over there where the buffer is on its stand. Uh, now obviously I can't use it in the corner like that, but I don't need this miter saw, so I just bought this to build the shed. So all that's going to get slid down. Uh, the bandsaw for cutting the kydex and like I said, old Kydex supplies and all that. My old truck box. Now, quick word about this miter saw. And I, you know, I kind of have a rule with Harbor Freight of, I, I try to buy quality tools uh, when I can, but this was a one shot deal. I don't need a miter saw. I needed it to build the shop, no doubt about it. But for knife making, I just don't need one of these. And it just didn't make sense for me to spend 400 bucks on a good one. So I spent a hundred bucks and I got the 10 inch slider model from Harbor Freight and it really works great. I, I was surprised. I thought it was going to crap out halfway through the project. I'm cutting pressure treated 2x6's with it and just zips right through them no problem. And uh, it, yeah if you need a miter saw for cheap this thing's been great. Yeah, so it's going to definitely stay in storage for when I have to do some more woodworking. Uh, for the hundred bucks it's great. Uh, over here we got the buffer. I bought the little stand that goes with it. Another Harbor Freight deal. And I thought this stand, I still got to bolt it down yet, but I thought this stand was going to be junk. Because you know, the one they put up on, the, in, on display in the store, they don't really bolt it down tight. It was a little wobbly. And then I think, ah, maybe I could weld it or modify it. For the price, it was not bad. It was like 30 bucks. But it's actually pretty stable. I was, I was pleasantly surprised with that. So, that's great. I can move that around, get it out of the way. Uh, one thing that's fantastic about this place is all the room. So, as you can see, I actually have a few folding chairs here. Because so, I could have a couple of people in here at the same time, which I was never able to do before. You know, people would stand outside of my shop and talk to me while I was in there working. So, it's nice, you know. I've already had some visitors pop in and and just hang out in here while I was getting it all set up. Okay, the elephant in the room, uh, almost literally. Like I said, this is a thousand pound machine and it's about 40 or 50 years old. Uh, for those of you that don't know or are not familiar with machining, this is a surface grinder. And it's made for getting things perfectly flat. I'm talking within a half a thousandth of an inch. For reference, a human hair <clears throat> is about three thousandths of an inch thick so it gets it perfectly flat now the reason why I bought this this old albatross here is because the new ones go for about five thousand uh, dollars for about the same size model and there was no way absolutely no way I was swinging that I lucked out with this one and got it for two hundred and seventy five bucks these normally go for about a thousand uh, these old used ones here. The guy didn't know what he had. He just go, went through a divorce and he was living at his mom's place. And so he is, you know, big sob story. Super nice guy though. And uh, he just said, here, just get, get rid of it. It's been sitting in my basement for five years. So it was a project in and of itself just to get this thing moved. And I'll roll in some more pictures of that uh, because, like I said, it's a thousand pounds. You're not lifting this thing. It's just to get it moved and located and the fact that it's 50 years old it needed some work so I had to rewire the entire machine and I, I rolled the dice on it honestly. I had a few knife makers say why don't you just wait for one that you can test out and, and pay the 800 to a thousand bucks they normally go for. And I really considered it but for 300 I, I rolled the dice and it looks like I got lucky. So it's just something special about now well before I get into that uh, these are old machines so they're 220 volts three phase power which your normal household current is probably 110 uh, single phase so you have to run one of these converters uh, which is another project to figure out the wiring because you don't want to blow this thing up or the machine so everything's all wired and done nicely nice 
And it's just something special about when you turn on a machine that probably hasn't run in a decade and it hums right to life. I indicated it uh, with a measuring device, you know, a dial indicator. And the run out on the spindle is a about a half a thousandth, if that, and barely any run out at all, so I, it looks like I got lucky. Now, to give you an idea of what this machine does, here's my old chop knife, right, a really old knife that I've been working on, and this is the, this is the finish I left it in, it's just all beat up, still heat treat scale all over it. <clears throat> so, as a test run, I surface ground it. That's what a surface grinder does. You see the what a difference. And don't mind the you know the crappy grinds. I just I beat on this thing and one of my first. So it went from that to that. And of course here's a an agitator blank that is just freshly surface ground on it. I ground this last night. Mind the fingerprints. But yeah, it's working great. So I figured uh, you know I'd fill you guys in and let you know that I'm coming back. I'm, I've been working hard, working 10, 11, 12 hour days in this shop to try and get it done so I can get back to making knife stuff. But I got about one more day of work, like I said, and then it's right back to knife stuff. And that's all you'll see from here on out. As you can see, I got some agitator blanks ready to roll pretty soon. These are all heat treated. Some of them have to be ground. And of course, there's a lot of fitting and everything that goes into it. But they're getting ready to go. Now, all right, guys, this is Mike from Ecom Knives. Thanks for tuning in once again, and more knife stuff is right on the way. Thanks, guys.